I'm still on a theory crafting kick, so I'm gonna fix all the hero ships in Star Trek Online. Starting out with the NX class, honestly, I feel like the legendary version of the ship, the legendary Columbia available in the 10th anniversary bundle, got it pretty close to like a really appropriate vibe for the ship based on what we saw throughout Star Trek Enterprise. They made it an escort, which is a little bit weird, but considering how much smaller this thing is compared to a lot of the other enterprises, it makes a bit of sense. And honestly, it's just a way to kind of change things up because all of the others are cruisers. So it's, just, it's, it's nice to add, throw in a little bit of variety in there. So I feel like keeping this as an escort feels appropriate enough to the NX-01. Uh, the, obviously, uh, Temporal is going to be the obvious choice for the primary spec on this thing because, you know, the, literally episode one, this thing got thrown right into the Temporal Cold War, so that just makes sense in my opinion. But uh, instead of Temporal for the secondary, like the legendary version did, I think, I'm probably gonna get some hate for this, but I honestly think Pilot is actually going to be the more appropriate secondary for this thing, largely because Captain Archer was a test pilot in the warp program. He, you know, it, it's a big part of his character, especially especially in the earlier parts of the show. So I think, like, I feel like just to pay homage to that, Pilot really works as the secondary for the NX class. So overall, the mastery and the weapons layout really don't change based off of the uh, the legendary version. But with the seating, uh, I did change up a little bit, mostly to give it that pilot seat. And then the console layout kind of stays the same. But yeah, this is the vibe I feel like that the NX, cla NX class really gives off based off what we see on the show. Next is the Constitution, and this one's going to be really short because honestly, I feel like the Temporal Light Cruiser, that's the one off of the, uh, the Infinity Promo Boxes, that really does fit the original slash TMP version of the Constitution class. That it's just like very few notes, uh, I'm you know from me based on that. I you know I've said many times that is one of my favorite ships to play in the game, and it just it it works for this ship in my opinion. So I I would not change much. I think there is an argument to be made to switch up the specialization to make it a primary commander, secondary temporal. But I don't think it's super necessary because, frankly, with especially with the Enterprises, there's always going to be a an argument to throw in command on there somewhere. And honestly, you just you can't do it on every single one. So I feel like commander command works as the secondary here and leaving it uh, as temporal as the primary is fine. One thing I really would have liked to be able to do is to change up the mastery on this thing or at least get away from the, the light cruiser designation because the cruiser mastery package is just nothing but tanking stats and it's it, standard cruisers are just boring they can't even equip dual cannons which is really frustrating in my opinion uh but yeah i just i could not think of a better designation for this yeah yeah you could make an argument for like something like multi-mission cruiser but at the same time just like with a command seat you could make the argument for multi-mission cruiser for pretty much any enterprise like ship and you you, you can't do that for every single one so it's i i couldn't think of a better option so i i left it for cruiser Next is the Kelvin Constitution, and this one, this is another one where I feel like they really got it pretty damn close the first time they did it with the uh, the lockbox version. That's the 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 heavy command cruiser that's released that was released in the uh, the old Kelvin the old Kelvin timeline lockbox, which is now in the Infinity lockboxes. I feel like that one's really spot on to it. The only difference I would make is just give it a five through weapons layout, and boom, done. Now, the Discovery slash Strange New Worlds Constitution is a bit of a thing, mostly because I feel like the ship gives off two different vibes based off of what we saw in Discovery and what we've seen so far throughout Strange New Worlds. Because after Star Trek Discovery came out, you know, after the season two finale, Star Trek Online made this thing a flight deck carrier, mostly because mostly because we saw this thing use a crap ton of these little tactical flyers down here, you know, which is why it became a carrier. But speaking logically, that doesn't make any sense unless this is like the whole star drive section is just completely hollow, which it isn't. So it's it never made much sense that this thing was had that many auxiliary cra auxiliary craft uh, station in it. But yeah, that's that's what the show had. So that's what they gave it. Honestly, I would not have made this thing a flight deck carrier. I would have made this thing a multi-mission cruiser. Uh, that way it would at least still have the one hangar bay, so you can kind of acknowledge that. But we've never seen uh, those tactical flyers since the uh, the that you know that one time they were used in Discovery. That we haven't seen them yet in uh, Strange New Worlds, and we haven't seen that sort of you know volume of auxiliary craft used uh, by the Enterprise in Strange New Worlds. So 
I, I feel like multi-mission cruiser would have made a good compromise, but at the same time, I'm also aware that if I take away a hangar bay, people will riot, so I'm just gonna leave that as a flight deck carrier. Additionally, I feel like Miracle Worker Command makes a good combo for this ship. The big thing I would change here, though, is that uh, compared to the original promo version of this ship, I would have uh, bumped up that secondary command seat up to Lieutenant Commander to give the ship a bit more versatility, because the original one only has a Lieutenant level command seat, and the problem with command seating is that it really doesn't have a lot of useful stuff in the lower level in the lower levels. Stuff doesn't really get good in the commander spec in the command specialization until you get to the the lieutenant commander level. Because with this way, you you could then use stuff like suppression barrage or concentrate firepower. But with the uh, lieutenant level stuff, you got like garbage like rally point and stuff like that. Excelsior class. I'm sure this one's going to be a big one for a lot of you because the Excelsior class is a very popular ship among the fandom and we still don't have a decent version of this ship as a playable T6 ship in Star Trek Online. So obviously the big changes I would have made or just a, a lot of things I would love to see in a new version of the Excelsior. One, 5-3 weapons layout. Like Seriously, 4-4 four, four has so little place in the modern stage of the game. Just stop bothering with it just just give it a 5-3 that's all it needs it <laughs> it's just if you want people to like the ship give it a 5-3 that's kind of the you know they have to know that at this point <laughs> uh but yeah uh specialization i would give it now i honestly I, that one was a bit of a debate for me uh i knew Mer going in miracle worker i really think fits the vibe for the primary specialization you know the excelsior was the great experiment of its time and the fact that it was in service for so long th uh, throughout Starfleet, like Miracle Worker works for this thing. But uh, for the secondary, kind of like with the NX, I wanted to go with pilot for the secondary to acknowledge Sulu's history as being the pilot of the Enterprise for so many years. However, I do think there's also an argument for command as the secondary because yeah, it, this was an Enterprise, and this was the Excelsior, this, yeah, and it really, the I feel like the Merrick Worker Command combo gives it, the ship more versatility, and the Excelsior is nothing if not versatile, given how long of a life, uh, how much of a service life this thing had throughout Starfleet, so I feel like there's an argument to be made either one. Honestly, I feel like more of you are going to prefer the Merrick Worker Command combo than the Merrick Worker Pilot combo. So maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I just shouldn't have bothered with that entirely anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the idea I had for the seating, uh, Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Lieutenant, uh, Commander Engineering Miracle Worker, Lieutenant Science, Lieutenant Commander, uh, Universal slash Pilot or Command, whichever one you'd want to go with, and, uh, Ensign Level Universal. Uh, so yeah, good amount of, uh, spread over there, much better than the, uh, uh, it's not I, the big thing I really wanted to get, go with this is not make it super burdened with engineering seating like all the other previous T6 Excelsiors are because that is their their big flaw is that it's just it's too much engineering seating and I don't know why Cryptic doesn't see that as a flaw. Ambassador class. This is another one I feel like they've already gotten pretty close to being just like right on point for the vibe uh, with the legendary ambassador. But the one thing I would have changed out of that is that I would have swapped the specialization. Uh, I remember when they initially announced it, they uh, announced that it was going to be a temporal primary. But then in like one of the very rare cases that they've ever done this, after announcing it, they actually changed up the bridge officer seating to change the specialization to make it an intel primary. And that never made sense to me for the Ambassador, because literally the first time we see the Ambassador class is as the Enterprise-C traveling through time. That is the big claim to fame for the Enterprise-C and the Ambassador class, is that it traveled forward in time and changed the timeline. So I would think Temporal would have been the obvious primary for that, but no, they made it Intel Temporal instead, which never made sense to me. So the, that's the one thing I would... Uh, change is that is making it uh, temporal primary Intel secondary though I'm sure there are some of you that are still going to gripe that Intel is the better option because then you get surgical strikes as the uh, as an option for the firing mode but um, well you guys know me I don't really care about single target firing modes oh and obviously give it a 5-3 weapons layout the Galaxy class. Now, we've got a few different versions of this one already. There's the uh, the Andromeda, the Cygnus, the Ross, uh, and the World Razor, all of which are completely different ships. They'll have a bit of a different vibe among them, uh, but there are a lot of commonalities between them. And also, this is just ignoring the Dreadnoughts, too, which uh, I am including in a different category. I don't consider the... Uh, 
because since Star Trek Online is never considered the uh, the mainline galaxy and the uh, Galaxy Dreadnought as the same ship, I generally keep the I generally keep with that line of thinking in terms of Stowe at least. Uh, but yeah, uh, what I would have done with a Galaxy class is that because one of the uh, like with the Excelsior, the Galaxy class is often overburdened with engineering seating, but then they get a little weird with it, like with uh, uh, the when they released the Cygnus, that one was just weird because either with because of how the universal seat was set up, it was either it was it always had too much engine, too much tactical seating or not enough tactical seating, which is a really weird problem to have. Uh, but then they released the World Razor, which is fantastic, but it doesn't fit the vibe of the Galaxy class. At least not what we saw of the Enterprise D throughout the next generation. The, the World Razor is this big, mean uh juggernaut and it just it's not what i it, well it, it's a very fun ship and i love that you can use the galaxy skin on it it's just it's not what i expect out of the enterprise d so that's what i'm going for here and one of the things i would go for that is that a it would have a commander specialization or command specialization as the primary uh because i mean this thing it's a flagship it's freaking huge these things fought in the dominion war command makes sense it, it gives very captain picard vibes you know command uh but then i would want miracle workers the secondary to give it a good amount of versatility so you can either go you know tank or torpedo build or you can go with an energy weapon build for the Mer with the miracle worker seating so you give gives you some good options there um and then uh with the uh, actual ship itself this one i would actually make a multi-mission cruiser because it, the galaxy class is freaking huge i've always wanted one that had a hangar bay that wasn't the dreadnought and i feel like multi-mission cruiser really does fit the vibe of the excelsior more so than any of the previous versions of the enterprise because like i said earlier there's an argument that you could make for pretty much any version of the enterprise that multi-mission cruiser would fit uh, the, would fit the vibe for any of those, but you can't use multi-mission cruiser every single time. You just, it's, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense to do that. You, you gotta give them each their own specific, uh, their own specific, uh, theme sort of. And for me, I think, I feel like multi-mission, cr uh, cruiser really fits for galaxy class. Now I know some of you are going to fight me on that and say that the galaxy should be a flight deck carrier. I'll get to that later. Yeah, for the seating, this is largely based off of the uh, the legendary galaxy or the leg the legendary Ross, uh, but just kind of tweaked a little bit and then threw in the America Worker seating, making sure that's a lieutenant commander uh, for the America Worker, and obviously it would have a five three weapons layout because again, four four has no purpose in the modern state of the game. And because I know someone's going to say in the comments, I know some people like broadsiding. I'm one of them. But the thing about broadsiding is that it still works better on 5.3 because your ship still has to travel forward. So it's still more beneficial to have more forward weapon slots. For the Galaxy Dreadnought, honestly, the legendary Galaxy Dreadnought out of the Mirror Universe bundle fits this ship exactly to what I would want. Like, no notes. The, this that, that was just like the ideal version of this ship. I, I have no further things i have no further suggestions for it that was that was just absolutely what i what it should be the sovereign class now there are a number of versions of this thing too but much like with the uh the excelsiors they are overburdened with too much engineering seating and a 4-4 weapons layout so obviously the first thing i wanted to do was give it a 5-3 weapons layout like the uh, like the i almost said odyssey like the sovereign should have <laughs> i'm getting ahead of myself uh but yeah I wanted to get a, a bit more different with this one, uh, like because like with some of the others, I was largely basing them off of their legendary versions because the legendary versions get fairly close most of the time. But with this one, I feel like the best representation of the sovereign is with a command intel combo for the specialization. Uh, initially, I had wanted it to be uh, intel primary command secondary just to kind of change it up a little bit because I the. Uh, the galaxy I had as command primary, but then I uh, kind of screwed. I had a little bit of a typo when making up the seating over here, and I uh, actually accidentally put command on the engineering seat. And the more I looked at it, the more I liked it more because one of the things I wanted to do with this also was to give it a lot of tactical seating. Because the thing with the sovereign is that this is meant to be a very tactical oriented ship. I mean, heck, uh, Star Trek Online literally calls it an assault cruiser, uh, which honestly doesn't mean much because that still just means it has the standard uh, cruiser mastery package, but I'll, that's another rant for another time. But the, this was meant to be a tactical minded ship. So I felt like giving it a lot of tactical seating was the right move for it. And 
more on that, I feel like Command and Intel as a combo really fit with that theme as well. And yeah, originally I wanted to have Intel being the primary, but honestly, Command works just as well for it too. And the only downside to there to this layout is that you really can't have it as a um, uh, a Surgical Strikes build. But again, I already said what I have to say about single target builds. Um, but yeah, you can see I kind of did this and just yeah, just cross it out. No, I like I like the Command better as the primary. Uh, another change I would make to this compared to previous versions of the Sovereign is that I feel like the Sovereign, above all other versions of the Enterprise, should be a battlecruiser. Because think about the time that the Sovereign was made, was introduced into Starfleet. You know, this is a ship that was made as the flagship during a time when uh, you know Starfleet is super paranoid about the Borg. Uh, they were either just about to go into uh, war with the Klingons, or they were already at war with the Klingons. I'm not really sure when the Sovereign actually launched, but, you know, right after that, then they go straight into the war with the Dominion. So, you know, the, it's it's the 2370s, man. It is a time filled with conflict, and that is exactly the type of ship that the Sovereign class needed to be. So it was meant to be a more tactical-oriented cruiser, which is why I think Battlecruiser best fits this ship. The Odyssey class, my favorite. Now, the problem with the Odyssey class is, while it is obviously a hero ship, it's an Enterprise, it's tough to say what its vibe is based off of canon, because in canon, we didn't really see it do much. And even in Star Trek Alliance, we haven't seen it do all that much. It just kind of shows up, you know, acts all super heroic because it's the Enterprise, and then we just kind of leave and go off on our own adventure because we're the player character in Star Trek Online, not Captain Sean. So obviously it's hard to say what a canon vibe for an Odyssey class is, but at the same time, you all know what I already want from an Odyssey class, so I'm just going to stick with that answer and move on. And before you yell at me in the comments about it, yes, this is why I didn't want the Galaxy class to be the flight deck carrier, because I want the Odyssey to be the flight deck carrier. We all know this. The Defiant. This is another one where they've actually gotten really close to hitting the mark with the vibe for this ship with the legendary version of the Defiant. Because, I mean, that thing was a pilot warship. Pilot warship is obviously, like, the go-to thing when you think of the Defiant. Just, it's it's a small, nimble ship, and you, you want to do barrel rolls in this thing. So, obviously, pilot ship is the way to go. And warship, obviously fits with the ship. Yeah, you, know, you can do the whole argument of, well, Starfleet doesn't like warships, but Cisco literally says, yeah, they called an escort ship, but... She's a warship, so making it a warship, that fits. Uh, the only thing I really would have changed is a little bit of the specialization seating uh, based off of what they did off of the legendary version because they gave that thing double pilot seating, which I didn't like all that much because doubling up on a specialization seating is just, it's not great because it's just too much of the same thing and too much of pilot is especially not that good of a thing. So I changed up the secondary seat to an Intel seat, which I feel like really does fit uh, the Defiant best because this was, you know, it, when it was introduced, this was a, uh, a, a super high tech prototype. It was not a lot, you know, not a lot of ships. There weren't a lot of them uh, was seen throughout Star Trek. Uh, even once we got into the Dominion War, the only other one, the only other one we really see in depth are the Valiant and the Sao Paulo, which the Sao Paulo, which is meant to be the replacement for the original Defiant. But yeah, I, I felt like Intel really fits the vibe, and I wanted to put that on the engineering seat because one, it, I it has a lot of engineering seating for an escort. Being having a lieutenant level, a lieutenant commander level engineering seat, that's kind of a lot for an escort. But I wanted to keep it a somewhat high engineering level because of Chief O'Brien. He was a crucial part of uh, Deep Space Nine and the Defiant, and I felt like the seating should kind of reflect that. But I, you know, obviously you want to balance that out by making that the special specialization seat and. Putting an Intel seat on the engineering seat in particular, I feel like, fits uh, that much better because with O'Brien in particular, remember, he had, like, two major storylines where he was in Starfleet Intelligence, or at least working for Starfleet Intelligence. So, yeah, Intel seating on the engineering seat, it, it fits lore-wise and it fits, uh, you know, meta-wise, too, which uh, I always love. Uh, and one last thing, which I think is actually uh, kind of crazy. Um Instead of giving it a uh, a standard battle cloak, which it should have a standard, it should have an innate battle cloak. Don't do that stupid set bonus crap like it did with the legendary. Just give it a battle cloak, but don't just give it a battle cloak. 
give it a Romulan battle cloak, which I realize doesn't make that much of a difference. But keep in mind that the cloaking device that the Defiant had was on loan from the Romulans. Starfleet didn't make that cloaking device. They borrowed it from the Romulan Empire. And yeah, I think it'd just be a funny little homage to the show to give the Defiant a Romulan battle cloak instead of just a normal battle cloak. The Intrepid class. Now, honestly, this one was a bit more difficult for me, mostly because I've never really agreed with the fact that this thing is a science vessel. Like, I get why Star Trek Online decided to make it the science vessel, because, you know, when the ship, when the game was new, uh, they needed something to be kind of, you know, the, the mainline hero science ship. And, you know, the Galaxy and Sovereign were already cruisers. Defiant was already the escort. So, you know... They, they you just threw Intrepid in with the science vessels because, you know, it was the third one. But I, you know, based on what we see of it in Star Trek Voyager, it always gave off more light cruiser vibes to me. But I because of the reasoning that Stowe had for it, I decided to keep this as a science vessel. And in fact, I actually kept this as a multi-mission science vessel as, like the um, like the legendary version is, because I do feel like uh, having access to a hangar bay on Voyager really makes a lot of sense, given how often uh, shuttles were a theme on Voyager. Uh, in fact, there's the running joke of Voyager having an endless supply of shuttle shuttles, given how many it lost throughout the series, which is always just a, uh, just a, you know, one of those classic Voyager oddities that happened throughout the show. But yeah, um, multi-mission uh, science vessel, I feel like really fits the vibe for this thing. Uh, but the specialization seating, I really wanted to change up uh, because uh, the legendary version of this thing has a uh, America worker pilot combo, which is just absolutely awful for a, for a science vessel. I know America worker. I, I always get pushed back on this whenever I say America worker is terrible for science builds because it, there is a point there that the, uh, the, the extra, uh, console slot is actually pretty useful for them. So I, I get that. But at the same time, I would much rather have temporal and Intel on this thing instead. And I'm justifying that given that, you know, Voyager had plenty of time travel, uh, adventures of its own. In fact, that's literally how it got home. So yeah, that's how I'm justifying the temporal, the temporal primary and the Intel secondary is that, I mean, how Voyager's mission started. It was literally on an intelligence, intelligence mission tracking down Chakotay's Maquis ship in which Tuvok had infiltrated while working for Starfleet Intelligence. So Intel, I feel like, kind of fits the vibe, too. In fact, one of the earlier, the uh, first T6 version, the uh, the Pathfinder, that actually has an Intel seat on it. So, again, it, temporal Intel, that's that's my reasoning for it. And I feel like the, the, it would actually make this thing a solid EPG build uh, instead of the, uh, the ones that we've currently got. And another excuse for the uh, multi-mission science vessel, give it Delta Flyer pets, because Delta Flyer is a classic Voyager staple, despite the fact that the Delta Flyer pets in the game kind of suck. And if you this if this ship ever were real, you should just use the Type 7 shuttles. But yeah, there's a reason for that. There's the seating, a um, little low on the tactical seating, but that's fine because it's, it's a science vessel and a uh, little high in the engineering seating, but I, that's why I put that on the Intel seat as well. And then everything else is temporal science, uh, science, and then universal, boom. The Titan. This is another one that was kind of tough, I, you know, just to kind of nail down the vibe of it, because there are frankly multiple sources that you could take from to try to figure out what the ship should be. Because originally this ship was introduced via the books, where it is meant to be a more long-range explorer. It really fits the science vessel uh, archetype based on what we see in the books. But from what we see in Star Trek Lower Decks, this thing is, you know, it's a tough battleship that's, you know, constantly, you know, swooping in, having crazy adventures with lots of explosions and stuff. Which is probably why Star Trek Online ended up making it a science destroyer. However, uh, you guys know my opinions on science destroyers. It is a stupid gimmick that has no practical use in the in the game because there is no possible way to change out your loadout when changing uh, the mode change. So yeah, I ultimately decided to drop the science, keep the destroyer. Frankly, I feel like more people will like it better this way anyway. So yeah, uh, keeping with the uh, the vibe of the original version, I did keep it as a command ship. The original Titan Science Destroyer has a Lieutenant Commander command seat, but it's not full spec, so I just bump that up to a command ship. And it really does fit, given that, you know, this is Riker ship, Riker 
you know, he's always ha had the whole commanding presence. He's the captain, yada, yada. Com command fits the vibe for it. And then uh, for the secondary, I went with Intel because, again, you know, it's meant to be kind of science-y. I, I really wanted this to kind of... Uh, well, despite the fact that I was making this a destroyer, I really wanted to keep some of its sciency origins in uh, the uh, the seating. So I kept the uh, the Intel secondary there, and I actually gave it two science seats in the bridge officer seating. One one of them's only an ensign seat, but still, it's meant to kind of reflect the uh, somewhat more sciency focus that I think the ship should have. But at the same time. I wanted it to be a full destroyer, not be a science destroyer, because as I said, science destroyers are dumb. The Crossfield. Now, again, this is another one where I feel like they were just so close to the mark uh, the first time they made this ship, because with the original uh, Crossfield spearhead, I, that, that was the first time uh, a spearhead had been introduced into the game. In fact, originally it was a science vanguard, but then they released the Jem'Hadar vanguard ships and they had to uh, change the name of this thing so <laughs> to uh, not cause confusion. So that's when these became spearheads. And spearheads are a little bit different from standard science vessels because they have an extra weapon slot. So they're a bit more tactical focused than your average science vessel. vessel because So that really does fit the, uh, the vibe of the Crossfield because this is a ship that was... Uh, seemingly made to test out the new experimental uh, propulsion system, the spore drive. Uh, so I mean, it was, it's literally stated in Discovery that this thing was a brand new science vessel when we first see it. But obviously it was built in a time of war. So, it, you know, it had to have some teeth. So Spearhead really fit the vibe for this thing. And the only downside to the original lockbox version of the Crossfield was that it wasn't full spec. So that's really the only change I made. I just bumped up the specialization seating a level each. So it's now a full uh, Intel spearhead with a secondary lieutenant commander temporal seat. That's really all the original Crossfield needed was to be full spec. The California class. Now, for some reason, anytime a Federation ship from Star Trek Lower Decks gets released into Stowe, for some reason, it always has double miracle worker seat, which is just really annoying because double miracle worker is not a good combo because there's only like two maybe three useful abilities in the miracle worker specialization so having two miracle worker seats is just obnoxiously redundant uh so i decided to change the secondary on this one to pilot which i know is might not sound that much better but i mean pilot does have its advantages in certain cases uh, especially with um, for unconventional system triggers, you get clean getaway, you get some other silly stuff like um, deploy countermeasures. So, I mean, you can kind of do a little reenactment of uh, the season three finale where uh, we called all of them. So you can have like a bunch of California class ships, which certainly amuses me. Uh, but yeah, this, I feel like Merrick Worker Pilot kind of suits the vibe for the ship. And keep in mind, this is still the California class. It's meant to be this kind of doofy support ship that no one takes that seriously. So giving it a secondary pilot seat uh, really kind of fits with that vibe of no one taking it seriously. Uh, that's also why I uh, decided to keep it with a 4-4 weapons layout. I know I've been saying that 4-4 has no place in the modern state of the game, but you could still kind of make it work. I mean, just throw a broadside build on it, it'll still work. But I feel like... Yeah, you know, for the California, it kind of works for the vibe, but for the other ships, you really don't want to do that, just, you know, so people will like them. But to compensate for that, instead of making this a standard cruiser, I wanted to make this one a multi-mission cruiser as well. Because, again, the, the California class, they're meant to be sort of jack-of-all-trades kind of ships. They're, uh, you know, they perform second contact to check in on their ships, but they're also meant to provide uh, engineering support. So, they're you know, whatever, uh, you know, problems might uh, arise for these pro uh, for these planets that they're checking in on, the California class has to be able to deal with that. So they have to, you know, have some amount of versatility for them. And I felt like multi-mission kind of uh, fits with that vibe. And plus, uh, ultimately, though, the, uh, the main reason I wanted to make it a multi-mission cruiser is to uh, give it an excuse to introduce uh, lower deck shuttles, uh, mainly the Sequoia, you know, the... the the uh, hot rod junker uh, shell craft that they use uh, that you see periodically throughout lower decks uh, when they particularly the one at the end of uh, season one where they uh, uh, board the pack led shuttle or the board, board the pack led ship. Uh, yeah, I, it's it, I don't know why I really want shuttle pets or hangar bay pets based off of that shuttle, but I really do. So I, with that, I really want a multi-mission uh, California to have an excuse for that. For the seating, I actually kept the uh, Commander Engineering, Lieutenant Commander uh, Engineering setup, so it's still got a lot of engineering seating on it, you know, kinda, to kind of keep the theme of, 
the the uh California being the doofy not taken t- not taken seriously ship but you know I obviously I put on the specialization seating on both of the engineering seats to kind of balance that out the protostar this is another one that was a bit of a struggle to come up with largely because I really wanted it to be a science vessel, but at the same time, I was also really tempted to make this thing into a frigate because frigate kind of fits the vibe of this ship too, just because it's a small, versatile little ship. And, you know, it's, I don't know, frigate just kind of fit the vibe for me, in my opinion. But ultimately, I decided science vessel was the way to go for it because the original one is a science vessel. And it's, I don't know, it gives more science vessel vibes than frigate vibes, in my opinion. But, uh, to kind of compensate for that, uh, I decided to make it a scout ship specifically. And scout ship, I feel like, really fits the vibe even more because this thing has, the, you know, it's got the unique proto warp thing, so it's really fast. It can go really far distances. It's it's a small ship that's meant to perform like really long distance reconnaissance, in my opinion, or really long distance exploration missions with a small crew. So, I mean, the scout just fits that vibe to me. Ultimately, I decided to give this one a pilot specialization as the primary, which I know I'm probably going to get a little backlash on uh, because that's really not the best thing for an EPG build. But at the same time, my reasoning is just um, throw synthetic good fortune on it. It's fine. (laughs) That's really about it. Uh, But yeah, uh, I did make up for that by putting temporal as a secondary. So it's at least still somewhat good for uh, an EPG build. But yeah, I feel like this one fits the vibe of it more. I did have a bit of a screw up with the seating. I came up with all this just kind of. You know, somewhat well-balanced seating, completely forgetting that scout ships have mostly universal seating, so just instead of remake the title, the uh, the sheet, I just crossed it out because I was lazy. But yeah, this is what it should look like. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have much else to say on this one. I think Protostar fits as a scout vessel, and um, yeah, that's what I think it should look like. Can you tell I'm getting really tired at this point? It's 5 a.m. right now, by the way, so if I sound tired, that's why. And lastly is the Constitution 3. Now, this ship was introduced somewhat recently, and I don't feel like its uh, stats really reflect uh, what we saw of the uh, the Titan A slash Enterprise G in Picard Season 3. But at the same time, I really hate this ship, so really the only thing I would do to fix this ship is just get rid of it. So yeah, those are all the Federation hero ships in Star Trek Online and how I would tweak their stats in order to make them feel more in line with what we see them do in the shows or movies. Be sure to let me know what you guys thought of this video down in the comments below because I'm sure plenty of you have your own opinions about how these ships should have been made. Just remember, this is my channel where my opinions are always correct. But yeah, let me know and while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you would like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member or you can find the link to the merch store down below. Or if you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, be sure to use my content creator code STU1701. Either of these really help me out and I really do appreciate it. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. My name is Stu and I will see you guys next time.